Hello and welcome to today's content of El Sorel since she has been announced and I'll talk more specifically about her unit as a whole, especially mostly in PvP. Um, also due to her, all her information and her gear not being 100% up to date as of yet on the War of Divisions calc website, uh, the, any of the builds and such that I used for her will be through the Japanese version, however it will be the same in global, but they will just have the different translated names pretty much. Without further ado, let's begin. So with El Sorel comes the new main job which is going to be the Nightblade. So for her main job takeaways for the Nightblade, she has the two buffs that she can use for allies. It's going to be Double Resist and Concentration. Double Resist is going to increase your Pierce and Missile Resistance by 25% each for 3 turns. Concentration is basically like Dwayne's Atonement where um, it increases the slash attack of her team as well as the defense penetration for herself only. Now onto her to more of her uh, main attacks that she can use on the main job and that are going to be more relevant. I'll say is going to be maiming slash is going to be one of the most important ones because not only is it AOE, it also has healing power down. The only introduction of healing power down we have in the game currently is only from Dragon Raid, which is from Kane's single target ability. Maiming slash is going to be AOE. It doesn't hit as hard, however, it is going to have the AOE effect of healing power down. Next up is going to be Drain Rush. Um, it's going to be as strong as like Triple Blow from Ramza. It does a decent amount of damage. Uh, the thing is, is that it is a triple hit, so it can chain. And 100%, uh, 170% is going to be like the same modifier as Triple Blow. So it doesn't do like bad damage. It will do relevant, decent damage. With her attack multiplier though, she can deal very good damage with it. Um, the most important part is that one, it is a multi-hit skill. So this can break physical abilities literally the moment it's used. It won't deal like the full damage obviously because it has to break the barrier and hit all three hits. However, that does essentially remove the barrier if it, all of the hits land. Second off, it also heals for 30% of the damage done, which is... It's not going to heal insane amounts unless she's literally... You built her as a glass cannon, but it does heal a little bit. So if you're just getting chip damage, you use Drain Rush and you heal a decent amount. The chip damage is not going to kill you on the next turn around. And lastly is going to be her Limit Break, which is going to be Good Night Rumble. So as you see, this is going to be her only 200% damage skill on her main job. Um, the range is also kind of short, unfortunately, because El Sorel's range in general is going to be a little bit shorter. But it, as you can see, the damage is going to be good. It's AoE, and the DP, uh, the decrease in AP consumption will be by 40% for herself for three turns, which is going to be very nice. That means if she does buff up with double resist, concentration, or any other AP gained um, ability. After she uses her limit break, she can still put out abilities as long as she has a little bit more AP, but she will have the advantage of the 40% reduced. Moving on to El Sorrel's sub job takeaways. I'll start off with, the, in my opinion, the most important one, and arguably most important, for me, in my opinion, will be the double gunner sub job. Uh, for this, she gets the split shot and horizontal shot. Those have very good, like, kind of unique ranges to their attack but most importantly that she'll have dual trigger which is going to be her hardest hitting ability in general um in terms of like usability it's going to be the 205 percent and it's two hits i put smoke screen in here i know this is a sub job takeaway so i don't i try not to put everything in there and just the ones that you want to use smoke screen is there she's not really a vady you uh, like an evasion unit and her passive um like the ones that you kind of want to use does not it, it decreases her evasion so you're not really going to be using smoke screen for the evasion but it's going to be more for the defense because she does not come with a, a good base defense increasing the defense in general and then going uh, heavy armor on her does help in that um, category significantly moving on i'll say her second most important sub job will be the spellblade sub job so because she doesn't have like super crazy uh, magic resist she does have a decent amount of spirit However, she can also boost her own uh, magic like tankiness with her spell job. And she can also technically tank with taunting spell because she has hate generation. I won't recommend it most of the time. It'll have uh, it'll require a special setup, but it is there available for her. Most importantly, it's going to be resist magic and magic barrier is what she's going to be using on the spellblade sub job. Lastly is her night blade main job sub job. I always say that it's kind of weird, but that's how it goes. And ironically, it only has two abilities, and they are both useful, however, they're both niche at the same time. As you can see from AP Drain, it is not like um, accessory break, 
like from uh, Delita where it always like chops off 20 AP or like Dwayne's Magic Infuse where it always chops off 20. AP Drain is literally a percentage of their max H uh, AP as well as it, it can add on modifiers such as like Human Kill and all that so you could drain a lot of AP. Keep in mind of the range because it is a two tile range. The only situation that um, Elsewhere will use this ability is if you have either everything off or she cannot use any abilities within that range or she has no AP and she's in like the exact range of those tiles. Basically think of it as like a super niche ability in my opinion. Next up is going to be Spinning Slash which actually is her number one harding, hardest hitting ability. However, it's not practically useful because of not only the height but it's also the tile range you will not be using this ability very often because of basically the range of it so let's get to the meat and bones of uh el Sorel for her pet resistances and her passives so for resistances to the damage types strike and dark element because she's light is going to be her main weaknesses um because she has zero percent um to slash and magic it means she is neither good nor bad against them i would quote unquote argue it's bad because um there are very strong slash and magic attackers but it's zero percent it's not negative at least so for here for the missile and pierce the reason why there's two numbers is that the top one 10 percent for missile 15 percent for pierce is before her master ability um ideally i it doesn't need to be said and i really shouldn't have to put this but i did anyways but with her master ability and you should have her master ability if you plan to use her is going to be at 15% Missile and 20% Pierce. So she's going to be very tanky in those categories. So resistances to statuses, unfortunately she has kind of crappy ones in my opinion because they're not as relevant. Poison is not super relevant right now. But, um, immobilize is actually not too bad but you do not see it very often and those are going to be at the 50% tier so it's going to be hard for those to land on her. She does have a 10% to stop resistance which is nice but it's not 25% so she still can be stopped. She doesn't have any for disable unfortunately and charm or anything like that so she will be susceptible to um, statuses. Moving on to her master ability though. Uh, she like all units now has the mono element master ability so she's going to get the 10% HP, the 15 light attack and for herself she'll get the 10 accuracy and as i stated earlier in the resistances she gets the pierce and missile resistance plus five percent for herself only as you can see from her mobility mobility she has three move one jump so she won't be moving around the map like crazy she does not have access to more mobility either without like equipment or a tmr so just keep that in mind she will have the standard three move one jump for her passives and this is where it gets kind of dicey in my opinion she has many type of builds because of what passive she can run. Most importantly though and most arguably I would use is going to be Tune Up. The reason for this is that it makes her agility 65 when she's level 99 so this makes her extremely fast and competitive. Um, also defense penetration is almost always useful in uh, regular team setup. Um, the Providence of Darkness um, is going to be her magic setup, her magic resistance setup and Nightblade Master is going to be her attack as well as big accuracy boost um, setup. So basically those three mass, um, passives alone are going to be very very useful. It depends on what you want to aim for with her because she has different types of builds in my opinion. So for the niche or flex part, I specifically put the Missile Master because while her most of her hardest quote unquote hardest hitting ability which is going to be Dual Trigger from uh, Dual Gunner sub is going to be there. If you're, you can basically get more out of the other passives than just 15 missile attack which only helps her dual gunner sub job instead of her entire kit which is going to be at least like 60 70 percent slash related so now let's move on to her reaction abilities so counter swing here is the unique part about it is that it's not it's only a slash type but it also has an element added onto it which makes it very effective against dark units if it hits the problem with this as you can see i put the the tile range for it is going to be one tile unfortunately so landing it is going to be more of a rare occurrence rather than a common occurrence she has magic guard from her spellblade um sub job meaning that she can she can mitigate magic damage if it does happen it will be at a 20 percent, but it can happen she also the, she also has the predictive fire from the dual gunner sub which will probably more often be used or not it is also not safer in my opinion because if it if it procs and the teammate gets hit instead because they're in the way, they will take like a large amount of damage from missile. 
but I would arguably say all three are okay. Uh, you would probably more likely use Magic Guard against Magic teams, Counter Swing against more shorter range teams, and Predictive Fire in just general. But they are they she does have the options for all three of those. And now to the rating of El Sorel out of ten. So to start off, my reasoning on why I put her at a 9.5 out of 10 for her pre-EX is because she's able to deal two types of damage, which is going to be Slash and Missile. Those are very strong typings right now, outside of magic obviously, but she does have access to those both. She has a defense penetration passive, and her buff that she has on her main job allows her to reach up to 60% defense penetration, which is very nice to have. Defense penetration is going to be always useful against any frontliners in general, so it's very nice to have. Her master ability and her nightblade passive allows up to 35 accuracy a boost before we even talk about her other like dex and luck stats. So it's very nice to have. She starts with a base of 8 spirit and has access to the magic uh, resistant passive and to flex into a magic tank if she wants to use her magic resist and her magic barrier and her magic uh, resistance passive. She does have the option for that. She has the introduction of the more unique AoE healing power down debuff. And her main damaging skill on her sub job is not only going to be a mini HP drain and decent damage, or it's going to be the AoE healing power down. Both, which I would argue the healing power down is much more useful, but the drain also helps. Like I said, if you're taking chip damage and you use the HP drain, you will not, you would probably not die the turn after if it was only chip damage. Also, if you look at it, like I said it before, if you use her tuna passive, it allows for the 65 agility. It makes her very fast and very com uh, competitive for that DPS. Her master ability mono light team passive is very strong with the right units, especially um, right now. You could argue like El Sorel, uh, Warrior Light, Sakura would be a very strong uh, light oriented team right there. But she does even in the future have a good team setup for that. <clears throat> That's why I give her a 9.5 because she. She's very flexible in what she can do, and she does it very strong as of right now, pre before EX. <clears throat> now, talking about post EX or after the Final Fantasy X, basically what happens at the first anniversary, and before her own EX. I gave her an 8 through 8.5 at max out of 10. The reason why I put this is that she is still short range on her, most of her abilities outside of her summer, uh, her gunner sub jobs uh, abilities. She's going to be weak to dark units in general, like they're going to be very relevant in both the ele um, element and the damage. So like Runestern, Dwayne, Garvel are going to be very effective against her. I would argue not really Kane because she has 20% innate pierce resistance. He's going to have a harder time killing her than her killing him. Um, she's going to be also reliant on buffs to raise her survivability. As I said earlier, she has that missile and pierce buffs or she needs her magic resistance, magic barrier um, abilities on her spell blade. It depends on what you use her for, but she kind of needs those to boost those survivabilities. Due to her reliance on the buffs, however, this means she is weak to dispel. So it's like Halloween Leela's um, a limit break or like a sniper's um, dispel. She will be weak to those. Also, she is weak to strike attacks, and while only having 0% slash and magic resistance. So here's the problem with this. As we go into EX, not only does Auron come out with um, a Pugilist sub job, so he can get strike damage. Um, the moment Winter Venera also gets her um, EX, she will also be a very strong Pugilist unit. So having those units in general will make Elsero have a much harder time surviving against them. And because she has a 0% slash and magic resistance, she will be vulnerable to two of the most common archetypes of damage. So you have to carefully think how you want her user and how she wants to mitigate those types of damage if she's going to get hit. But why she, I would say she still keeps her rating at 8 or 8.5 instead of like having something lower, like 7 or something, is that she still has access to the AoE healing power debuff that not many units actually have. So if you're, if you're facing tanks, and you have a healing power down like El Sorel or Kane, it will help in the long run if they're just trying to like survive and mitigate your damage by healing. It does help in that and that she she's unique in that she's almost the only one. I believe she's the only one that has it for now. There's probably another unit that might have it that's AoE, but I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But this is more for the recent EX until she gets her own. Um, also, because she does not have slash or missile penetration without um, equipment or a vision card, 
it'll make future matchups kind of difficult such as like the UR Mont stuff so she will be kind of dependent on her equipment to make sure that she can stay relevant so for her TMR chasing it's going to be the heart shaped hairpin where as you can see it has 10 spirit 12 accuracy which is very nice on the spirit the HP is all right accuracy is all right but because it's an, it's an accessory that's not bad it, it's an accessory slot the effect is going to be wake up impact where it increases your accuracy by 30 for three turns for all allies this is the important part that if you did use this because not only if you use the the hairpin you get 12 accuracy onto that if you use her um, accuracy boost from the night blade passive 35 you add the 12 we're at 47 if you use the active as well it'll be at 77 accuracy bonus before she's hitting um the enemies and i i just want to say this like before later but if you have the exorist um vision card to put on her and that has the evasion down ability if you combine those evasion does not mean anything to her like evasion teams do not she it, she does not get phased by evasion teams pretty much if you had that setup like that's for an example her tmr allows for that uh, extra extra accuracy for her team it's it's niche so i give it an 8 out of 10 but it's still effective in what it does so here we are, how to fight as or against El Sorel compositions. Starting on the left side, we'll start with the fighting as. So if you're fighting as El Sorel, she's going to be the hardest hitting physical light element DPS for now. She's able to top Cecil's raw attack damage if you use the, uh, the passives, and she has the defense penetration toppled on top of it. With that, her mono light team uh, master ability pair her with other types of light units to capitalize on the damage and health gains. Such as like Warrior Light, Sakura, Cecil, even Ramza can be used. Like just being able to benefit from the buff is going to be nice. It's not going to be your winning condition, but it's there as a benefit. Since Elsorel has short medium range on most of her abilities, you should try to compensate that by... She will take damage from most units in general because most of the meta units either are going to have huge AoEs or they're going to have very long range or good range. So having her survive abilities or taking damage is going to be kind of important in using her as a unit in my opinion. El Soro has a lot of team buffs as you saw before. Make sure you're using it in her kit if you want to make the full like utility of her abilities. Her healing power down is also very big and her triple hit is very nice to either build up chains, deal damage, or sustain with the little drain that it gets. Also, Elsero does not have 100% hit abilities, as I said before. However, she, like I also said on the different slide, she does have access to the Exorist Vision Card ability and has very good accuracy with her Nightblade passive. She can make, um, what is it, evasion teams suffer to her because she has the tools if she like used it. If she used her tools that is in her kit, she is able to handle evasion teams pretty well. So moving on to fighting against El Soro. El Soro is going to be weak to strike, like th that's going to be the obvious. She has a base of 0% to slash and magic resistance. She does have flexible builds, so make sure you have to watch out what like the El Soro that you're fighting is going to be building. Um, so that means strike type attack damage in general will be very effective against her because it's kind of hard to mitigate against that and mitigate against everything else. In general, she'll probably just use more general defenses such as like just a lot more defense or a lot more spirit but it's hard to bring up strike resistance right now until we get like phoenix as an esper or something else more relevant dark units in general can be can deal very good damage if not almost one hit ko elsorel if that elsorel is not properly like mitigating against that um damage type so watch out if that elsorel is like very tanky if she's building up dark resistance with her luminous armlet and just basically look at what her defensive setup is because she is flexible and she doesn't have any glaring weakness except for the strike. Be wary, very wary of, of bringing missile and pierce units against Elsorel because she has insanely high good resistance against those art, um, attack types and her main job ability has a buff to buff it further so try not to bring those attack types against her. Elsoro has flexibility to slash and missile type damage, so as much as I put the Solidus vision card there to prevent her from dealing more slash uh, damage, she can still do a lot of damage if she is has the dual gunner sub drop with missile. Um, also, Elsoro does have access to the healing power down, so if you have a team that's like a tank healer and just one DPS, if that one DPS is not able to output faster than the healing power down um, and your healer is only focusing on healing because the healing power down then you're gonna have a much harder time in winning that matchup without um, 
basically either cleaving a lot of damage with AoE or taking out like Elsorel or the healing power down quickly as possible. Also, Elsorel is very susceptible to like important statuses such as like Disable, Confusion, and Charm. Um, disable and Confusion being very relevant from either Agrius or Dwayne or even like arm shot from Gunners it is something to consider if you want to fight against Elsorel. So for the 6 units you should bring with Elsorel, I would recommend something like either Sakura, Ramza, Warrior Light, or Cecil. They all make benefits off the light mono team um, buffs. You could also use Ayaka for either the haste bonus to get Elsorel up in the front real quick because she has short range. The haste will allow her to basically get in range much faster and get out her abilities. I put Victor here only because of an example of 1. Sniper and 2. Missile. Because Elsora also has the dual gunner sub job, she can chain off a missile. And Victor is here. I, I can also put um, Niv Lu, but I put uh, Victor here specifically. They can chain off each other with the missile type uh, attacks. So that's why she is put there. Now, fighting against Elsora. I, I put Halloween Leela here because magic in general, if the Elsora does not use the magic passive or no magic guard reaction, Magic damage will deal very good effective damage against her because she's a base 0% magic, she will take good damage from them. Um, Raldor is here because he has very good slash and missile resistance and he's very defense tanky. He's also strike damage so if he went up against Elsorel, he can deal very good damage to her if not one hit KO her. The next 4 units are all going to be dark units and they're going to be all relevant against her because um, if you don't have a slash penetration or missile penetration, Whisper can definitely tank her very well. Ruin Stern does an insane amount of damage. He can probably one shot her if she's not running slash resistance or dark resistance. Garvel coming out at the same time with her. Uh, Garvel has both, um, he's going to be dark element and very strong magic attacks. If she does not go her magic resistance build, she will take heavy damage from Garvel and probably die in one hit. Ziza is not very oftenly used by players. However, she not only has Steel Heart that she does use on auto, Two, she's also strike type attack damage and she could deal a good amount of damage with at least her LB. So it can kill El Sorel with that. It's a high threat. And with that being said, I do have a few example builds of El Sorel down in the description box box below. Um, don't follow them one for one. They're kind of just there to like show example builds on what you might want to build her as or try her as. It's there are there mostly for reference just to see. And we arrive to the end of the video. As always, if you liked my unit analysis on El, El Sorel, um, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. I'll try to make more content like this as much as possible as EX is coming out. And until next video, peace out.